Okay, so sharks. Set up the Virginian marine ecoregion last video, and we should talk about the 54 to 55 species, and that's really important. Why is it 54 to 55? Um, <clears throat> there is a gulper shark here. It is... <sighs> This is my fault for not knowing. It's either Centrophorus nyakong or Centrophorus uh, granulosus, or a new Centrophorus that they're still trying to figure out. Basically, gulper sharks have been notorious taxonomically. Like they're they're sometimes really tricky to key out, right? And one of the big bases uh, bases for making my ecoregion video is that like there's different levels of of validating if a species lives here, right? Um, so the basic level that I like is the IUCN Red List uh, range maps. They have these really cool range maps for confirming, yes, we have a species here. And they are not perfect. Sometimes they're kind of inaccurate, right? But for the most part, I mean, they're my go-to. I really like them, right? Um, but my criteria is that, you know, if I'm going to talk about an ecoregion, I'm going to list all the species in the ecoregion, um, I want that species to be included, I want a range map of that species, a confirmation, right, from the IUCN. And then I also want a second confirmation, preferably a third confirmation from a completely separate source that that species existed there, that you can find that species. Because, I, you know, you can't trust just one source, you know, that's not being a good scientist or uh, a good thinker. Um, <laughs> so I've seen sources of um, information about the mysterious gulper shark. Um, and if you do, for anyone who doesn't know, a uh, gulper shark is sort of like a dogfish. They're related to dogfish, uh, the family Cent Centrophoridae, <laughs> um, but they're their own unique family, uh, and they live very, very far down deep. They're a little bit more, what's the word? A little bit, tiny bit stockier, a little bit stockier than your t typical dogfish, a little bit more elongate. Um, they have these beautiful, like, I I've been privileged enough to actually see a, uh, I mean, it was dead, but like a preserved specimen of a gulper shark. And their skin is this, this gorgeous, dark, like, it's hard to make an equivalent. Um, it's this really gorgeous, dark, rich, I don't want to say chocolate, <laughs> baby chocolate, <laughs> but this gorgeous dark uh, chocolate skin color with these really tiny white spots, like these, not not spots, like little pinpricks, and it's sort of like, it looks like this shark is wearing the constellations, if you will. Um, very, very beautiful, and you can't, you can't really see that in photographs, which is really sad, but when you see it up close, it's, it's a really, it's a, I mean, I feel this way about all sharks, I think they're all gorgeous and exquisite and amazing, but, um, it's, it's very apparent with this particular species. I think they're beautiful, someone else might find them ugly, um, and other people might find them slimy, because sometimes they are quite musically see, but anyway, gulper sharks. Uh, gulper sharks are a pretty important deep water taxa, and we do have one. Um, multiple people have s cited that there's a gulper shark that has been caught in, I believe, one of the canyons, or maybe a couple of the canyons. Um, the thing is, again, gulper sharks, they're just, I think there's trouble with their taxonomy. I think people get confused of which species is which species. Are they the same species? Are they different species? How do you know they're different species? Like, there's debate. There's healthy debate about, like, what is what. So, um, the gulper shark that lives here, it's been called Centrophorus nyakong before, and I think that's the Taiwanese gulper shark, or the Taiwan gulper shark, right? But I think people have debated that, because that doesn't really make sense. I mean, not for that reason, but there's other reasons, you know. Specifically, you look for, like, you know, are the vertebrate counts the same, you know? Do Are the measurements between, like, you know, the eyeball to the gill slit, or, you know, the first dorsal fin relative to the second dorsal fin, like, are they different? You know, if you want to go even further, are there different, you know, DNA sequences, like COI sequences, stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of weird little nuances that make sharks separate, so... Um, yeah, they're under debate. Anyway, I believe they're, su they're under such debate that there's not a nice, healthy IUCN account on the species. And even though there's other accounts, I just, I just did not want to include it in the video because, you know, I want my IUCN account. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a nice little standard. So that's just me. Um, but I'm glad I could talk about it in, in a format. And that's sort of why I like these sharks and coffee videos, because if I ever, like, 
you know, miss something. I mean, this is an example of me intentionally excluding something. Um, you know, it's cool to explain why. So, so yeah, but that lives here. Um, in terms of the things that I did include in 54 Sharks of New York, uh, there are three species that um, no one has emailed me about, which is nice, but I, I know that they're probably going to raise some eyebrows. And I've shared this with friends, like marine science friends, and they were like, whoa, I didn't know that existed here. Um, so let's talk about these three. Species number one, the whale shark, Rhynchodon typus. Ooh. Mm. Same whale shark. There is only one whale shark in the world that we know of. I'm just going to assume that's the only one in the world. Um, but it's the one you see on National Geographic. It's the one you see in all the videos. It's that beautiful, gigantic, largest fish in the sea with the dark skin and the bright, well, not bright, but like white speckles. Really, really cool. I actually had a friend who was swimming with a whale shark and he got too close and the whale shark's tail, like, sort of slashed his leg. Um, the whale shark didn't, I guess the whale shark was not happy with him being so close, so he just kind of thumped him with his tail, and because, you know, shark skin can be really rough, depending on how it rubs against you, and because the whale shark is just huge, and it's a very, you know, all sharks are muscular and powerful, um, it, you know, gave him a cut. You know, he's fine, it's just like, you know, <laughs> I would never call that a shark attack, but, but, you know, it is a fun little story. But anyway, whale sharks. Highly, rem highly migratory species, and they exist in all tropical seas. Um, so they're in the Caribbean, they're in the Pacific, very, uh, probably the most famous in the Pacific, I would say. Actually, no, eh, Belize, I think Belize has a big whale shark thing going on. But uh, if you remember from the last video, I was talking about the Gulf Stream, how tro Gulf Stream brings tropical species up. Whale sharks seem to move northward um, with that, and they've actually entered the Virginia Marine Eco region, they've been, they've been found here, um, specifically in off Norfolk Canyon. Um, so Norfolk Canyon is big deep water system off of the coast of Virginia, specifically like, you know, a lot of Virginia beach fishermen and anglers, they love to be out there because you get a lot of cool fish. But anyway, um, there was a whale shark sighted there a couple years ago. Uh, which is, and I, I think, uh, one of the news organizations, local news organizations, that got a photo of it, reported on it, and it was just awesome to see, like, a primary source, like, saying, whoa, we do have whale sharks. Um, and IUCN, of course, they say whale sharks can range as far north as, uh, I want to say it's Massachusetts. But what's interesting, I was reading in another paper, a different paper, or primary source from Russia saying that whale sharks enter Russia, um, and specifically that area between uh, Japan and Russia, um, so that southern, south, oh, what do you say, southeastern portion of Russia, um, whale sharks rarely enter that area. Uh, so it's really cool to see that in other parts of the world, I mean, this phenomenon of whale sharks typically attributed as a tropical species entering temperate places that's not unique here that that happens elsewhere so i and I, I think that's amazing and, and very very cool so it's very rare because the water here is pretty it, it's cool to cold right and whale shark really not all about that <laughs> but uh it happens and so it's a very very rare occurrence but you know, I'm including everything that has several accounts, and even if it just dipped its little fin here once, you know, I, I'll include it on the list. So, whale shark, there you go. By a similar token, uh, great hammerhead, Sviena macron, um, that is another species that has entered the Virginia Marine Eco region from the tropics, right? I mean, the Gulf Stream, it brings a lot of stuff up. I've heard of lionfish being dumped in Rhode Island. <laughs> thanks to the Gulf Stream. Uh, manatees, manatees do enter the Chesapeake Bay, even though it's something you think about in Florida, they do enter that. Uh, Chesapeake Bay is the northernmost region. Um, sea turtles, sea turtles are more cosmopolitan, but we get loggerheads, leatherbacks, actually we get, we get a bunch of them um, in this area. Uh, yeah, Gulf Stream is a very, very powerful force, you know, you, and, and tropical angelfish, you do get angelfish up here, you get butterfly fish. Um, spot fin, I want to say it's a spot fin butterfly fish that comes here. But anyway, hmm. so great hammerheads, Sphere Um I, I'm, I actually zinged a scientist about this because <laughs> I read on the IUCN account that great hammerheads do enter this area, right? And he correctly pointed out, well, okay, he correctly pointed out you shouldn't trust one account, which is true, but he incorrectly said they don't come here, it's too cold, 
you know, it's we've never seen one, right? And that is wrong. Zing. Um, they actually have been tracked up to Rhode Island. Uh, so Great Hammerheads, and I forget which team did it, but um, they've, they've documented them all the way up to Rhode Island. And again, it's that Gulfstream system. It's a typically very, very famous tropical species. You've seen it on Shark Week. You've seen it in the Bahamas all the time. It's the one with the huge head. It's the biggest hammerhead, giant fin. Very, very famous tropical guy. Um, and it's admittedly really, really rare here, um, but it does occur here. And I believe the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, which has one of the world's oldest shark surveys, I think it might be the oldest shark survey in the world, they, they've they actually caught one uh, in their records, um, but like just one. I mean, these guys are really, really rare because they don't want to be here. It's, it's too cold, right? In terms of other hammerheads that do want to be here, we do get scalloped hammerheads, Sirena Luini, bonnet heads, one of my favorites. I love bonnet head sharks. They're, they're super cute. And um, they're, they're fun to interact with because they come very, very close to shore. Like, I, I, was, I was very lucky enough to actually kind of wade with one. <laughs> and, like, that, which is actually my favorite shark experience, honestly. Like, I've been shark diving before, but just, I don't know, having no tank, having no gear, just kind of standing in the water being yourself and a bonnet head shark comes up to check you out and you know passes away and then returns passes away like just uh, that that's my favorite shark story thus far but anyway sorry i love bonnet head sharks they have a special place in my heart they're really really cool we were checking each other out but anyway um super super cute they do come here more of a tropical species but they come here in the summer and then smooth hammerhead uh smooth hammerhead sphere zygaina which is not a well-known hammerhead it's not a popular hammerhead it looks almost identical to scalloped hammerheads except that the uh the hammer if you will has like a smooth set of uh bumps you know not not they're not really notched like the scalloped hammerhead but anyway and smooth hammerheads are really cool because they they were one of the few shark species that likes to enter canada sometimes and it's just i don't know <laughs> i'm rambling a little bit but anyway we do get hammerheads but great hammerhead is not one that it typifies the region right carolina's very very great place to find um great hammerheads right florida bahamas also excellent place Virginia neck region, not so much, but it happens, right? Um, and then, let's see, what was the last one? The last one, um, so this area has a lot of deep water canyons, and so you're going to get a lot of surprises, right? Um, the one thing to remember is that deep water systems, they're very stable, right? In the shallow water, uh, temperature and seasons, right, seasonal shifts in temperature, that have a huge effect, right? Like, a lot of species have unique temperature ranges, and once it gets too cold or too hot, they don't want to be there anymore, so they'll move away, right? Um, but that's because, like, the, the, the shallow sea, you know, the, the, ocean, the part of the ocean that's on the coastline, you know, it, it heats up more quickly, it's closer to the sun, you know, it, it's more at risk for change, right? But the deeper you go, you know, the darker and farther down you go into the ocean, um, you're not going to get that change. You know, it's, it's much more stable, right? And you're going to get a weird biodiversity that's not used to change, right? So you're going to get a lot of species that live in deep water that just, you know, it doesn't matter if you're offshore from Florida or offshore from Britain or wherever, it, you know, the system's rather stable. So this is a nice lead into a mystery shark, like like a, a surprising shark on the list, Greenland shark, uh, Somniosus microcephalus. So Greenland sharks are becoming much more popular. Um, like when I, I'm, I mean I'm a '90s kid. Like uh, the first footage of a Greenland shark, they fa they uh, released it part of my fa as part of my favorite Shark Week documentary. It was um, the Ultimate Guide to Sharks, 1996 or seven, um, and I think ever since then, Greenland sharks became just really fascinating, you know, because it's just this huge, um, I mean, predatory, it's a predatory shark, but like not, it's very slow. <laughs> I'm surprised that they eat seals, they eat seals, but like, I, I, I feel like it's just scavenging, but you know, it's a slow shark. But anyway, it's like, it's like a giant terrifying dogfish, right? It's a, if you don't know what a Greenland shark is, um, and it's, it's a type of sleeper shark. So, um, it's sleeper sharks are very, very big. Um, I think they could get to be about 20 feet long, just nuts. Um, and, and dogfish like, so they have sort of a slender build, but you know, just 
fat and stocky and have these like really big like awesome cutting teeth and just like these like these um how do I say that sort of like sort of like chainsaw teeth a little bit it's not like a white shark where they're pointy and up you know like they're, they're kind of in this belt if you will like dogfish sharks have this really cool belt of like yeah, chainsaw teeth I don't know how to say that um but anyway so Greenland sharks you know they're not a shark you want to ever get bit by it's it's, it's awful and I mean what shark do you want to get bit by <laughs> but anyway I mean, it's an awful set of teeth, not an awful shark. But anyway, so Greenland sharks have become more and more popular, um, and they are a subject of interest in the Arctic, because it's an Arctic shark. It's, it likes to be in shallow water in the Arctic. Um, it's a great place to film them, you know, in the polar seas. It's just, it's a very, very cool, fascinating animal. Um, but what kind of surprises people is the fact that, you know, Arctic is really cold, stable conditions for the most part, right? Um, that the shark will like to be in the shallow water in the Arctic for those reasons, but then it can also descend into the depths where it's still cold, still stable, and it can travel pretty far south if it wants to. So we've had Greenland sharks um, in the deep water canyons. They do not come close to shore at all, ever, you know, not here, because that would kind of kill them. It's out of their temperature regime. But in the deep dock, like the wicked dock, like, um, yeah, I mean, in the dark, deep water, they're there. And it surprises people, because again, Greenland shark, you would not expect to see one off New York, but if you want to go a thousand meters down, you might say hi to one. <laughs> so I think it's really cool. And it really, deep water biodiversity really adds to the richness of the region. If you only included shallow water species on the coast or um, you know, offshore, like mako sharks, thresher sharks, you get about 30 species, I would say. Um, deep water fauna gives you an additional mm, 15 to 20, you know. Um, and in this case, like, you know, the, the sum total is like 54 sharks. Uh, and if you want to know what those are, definitely check out 54 Sharks in New York, because it's a nice little non-rambling summary of our wonderful, wonderful biodiversity. Thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, again, check out 54 Sharks in New York. I mean, that's a really great introduction to the sharks that might be in your backyard, especially if you're in uh, the U.S. Mid-Atlantic. So anyway, till next time.